All right, gang, welcome to the podcast. I think we're at like 63 or 4 this week. Um, and uh, today, Kate and I are going to just dive into um, the evolution of the businesses. So, you know, the one thing that, that we try not to do is get stale in what we do. And, and we evolve as people and, and, you know, we continue to evolve our business. And things we're going to talk about today, you know, I, I think, you know, on her side, they might be even bigger changes than, than mine. Mine are, are very subtle, but you'll, you'll see them start to roll down the pipeline um, here in the summer. And, and they'll be subtle, but I think if anything, they're, they're going to just simply improve the, uh, the member experience. I don't see anyone getting upset with these. Um, you know, I think with your business, it's, it's a, it's a stark difference to like how you were coaching people. But I think it's, it's also like what I love about it. It's really sustainable. And I'll let you just kind of dive into what, what you're looking at doing and, and kind of evolving your business. And then we can play catch and come back over here to the CrossFit side. So. Yeah. So, um, I think the changes that I'm making now, uh, with the body biz has been a long time coming. Um, I was just really afraid to implement a lot of these changes. Um, because personally I was afraid to make those changes. So, um, if you've worked with me like old school on the body biz, it was pretty strict, pretty structured people, people like that because, uh, you know, structure isn't personal. It's just, Hey, you're going to eat this. You're just, you got to plug your macros in. You got to hit it. Um, you have a lot of rules. We don't have to think a lot. Um, and that works until it doesn't work. (laughs) Um, but it's not really meeting anyone where they're at. Um, and that's really kind of the biggest issue that we were running into is former clients kind of coming back that were, um, burn out of tracking and then, you know, just kind of embarrassed to say, okay, this is actually what I'm doing right now. Yep. So then it's really, it's really tough to understand how, how to help someone change if you can't meet them where they're at. So what I kind of felt like we were doing is instead of understanding where someone was at entirely, we'd spend like mm-hmm. a meeting there, but then really not observe them in their normal, you know, eating behaviors, workout behaviors, sleep patterns. And we start saying, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. So um, this really came from a place of personally trying to work on self-love and meeting myself where I'm at and accepting myself. So then therefore I can make small changes and I'm not always battling to be perfect because perfection doesn't exist (laughs) in in humans. And I might say on a a day now, um, so I'll get food logs. I might say perfect today, but that's perfect because they honored what their body needed that day. There is no perfect day. It always needs to change because if you repeat that day, day in and day out, you're eating the same thing day in and day out. And then that's not so great for you because you're not getting in a wide variety of vitamins and minerals. And um, then just even uh, mentally, (laughs) it gets really, really old. That's not healthy for you. So um, this is, I mean, way, way back in the day when I first started doing like food plans. um, If you know me from like the show era, it was literally eat this. I'll tell you exactly what to eat. There are no, it was before kind of tracking devices and uh, you ate it every day for uh, four to six weeks, and then they would get a new plan. So um, that's a huge change with the body biz. We don't that's, track macros And that's anymore. tough, too, you know, when your body needs different food on different mm-hmm. days. And, like, mm-hmm. say you have a hard workout or, you know, you got less sleep or, or whatever it is, like, your body's needs change. And then that, that piece of paper, which is the same diet every day, or maybe you have a, like a, a rest day diet. Would yeah. You have that? Um, man, way back in the day, it was the same thing. No matter. Yeah. 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 Well, so your yeah. Bo- <clears throat> yeah, your body's going to need different things on different yes. days. And then if you're just locked in, yeah, of course it'll work. But like, you know, you're going to be on a roller coaster of like feeling like yes. crap, yes. you know, and after then a while. I would always just personally feel like, I mean, I would feel like. I, you know, 
triumphant that I, I got through this four to six weeks. Yeah, it takes a ton of discipline it's, to yeah, eat it's, like it's that. Yeah, it's such a mental game. It's harder game. to eat like that than to train hard. Yeah, but know? I was always yeah. feeling like some, you know, even at, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> I mean, almost every day you get to a meal and you might have one or two meals I, I would like, but I, I was eating things that I didn't want to eat, especially on those old school plans. But then even when I was tracking and putting it in, um, really setting myself up, I was just finding that I like, Every day was becoming a battle, and I think I was just so tired of being locked into the same thing. Yep. So what um, what we're doing now <clears throat> is we go through a period of observation with our new clients. So um, I meet with a client. I try to learn a lot about their uh, history, their exercise history, their dietary history, um, their weight fluctuation history, where they feel they've felt best as an adult, um, if they felt healthy at that time, because it, so many of my clients, male, female, uh, both, you know, male and females, um, will cite a time like, okay, I was, I really felt great in clothes and I was at a lightweight, but I wasn't eating. What I was doing was not healthy to get there. So then we don't really count that. So kind of like, okay, deciding, do, does this need to be an, an exploration to determine your healthiest weight? Um, uh, and then I go through a period of having them send me recalls every day, what time to eat, how much they eat. So we're still, um, I like to use ma- measuring cups now and not scale. Scale seems a little obsessive to me, but one or the other, um, it's still quantities of food that they're having and the times that they're having them and observe them for three to five days and then sit down and meet with them. I don't comment good, bad, indifferent. I'm observing them so I can meet them where they're at and get them to accept where they're at and make small changes so it sticks. And um, this is a stark contrast to um, what you're doing was not good. (laughs) We need to now overhaul everything Um, because I think that just comes from a negative point of view in in not accepting yourself. Um, And, you know, the weight's, been a little bit of a struggle with me throughout my life. And I've done a great job probably in the last, you know, 10 years of being more consistent. Um, and then it's always been my job to kind of be in shape, but, um, you know, I weighed the same in seventh grade as I do now uh, a little more. So it was always something I kind of battled and thought that I needed to come from like a place of like a little self hate to get to where I wanted to be. Like you're gross. That's not good enough. We need to change and that doesn't stick and it feels really bad. So to to kind of come from a place of like, hey, here's where you here's where you're at. This is what you're doing that's positive. This is what we need to change a little. And in really just kind of coming from that place of like acceptance and then making consistent changes that stick. Uh the process is much faster over a period of time. Yeah. And I kind of equate this um this is the analogy I like to use now. If you run a 5K with like younger kids, um, most of the time they'll start off sprinting. And I always see those kids and it's kind of funny. It's cute. They're like super excited. And that's like my clients when they start. They spend all this money and they're like, oh, I don't give a shit. I'll eat like, you know, poop burgers, whatever you tell me to do. I want to be ripped. I want a six pack. And, and so my clients are like that too. They're sprinting and they're working so hard. And then you see those kids on mile one, anywhere mile one to mile two, and then they they crash. They're walking. They feel like crap. They're like dry heaving. That's my clients. They they would you know I I would try to trans transition them to intuitive eating, but still the burnout kind of exists there. And it's to me it was still kind of sending the wrong message of um, this is right, this is wrong. Instead of this is where you're at, let's make these changes. So now I look at like running the 5K at a at a sustainable pace that might not feel super hard in the beginning, but it's going to get hard naturally over time if you stay consistent. Yep. And that's eating healthy and, and eating, not overeating, um, choosing healthy foods, choosing not to drink alcohol a ton. And, and over time, it becomes hard naturally. It doesn't need to be that hard in the beginning. It will happen. Yeah, I mean, I think... I don't think anyone wants to have to be addicted to like a gadget for 
20 years to input all your food in, you know, that that's going to be, I wouldn't call that like a sustainable um, behavior over time. It's, it's a great tool, I think, for some people to like really get to learn like, hey, this is actually what I'm putting in my body. And like, and then when you're putting it in, it's, it makes you more mindful. But, you know, you don't want to have to be pulling your cell phone out and like putting in like the ice cream cone you had on Saturday, yeah. you know, for, for the rest of your life. And that brings <clears throat> up a good point because, yeah. you know, a lot of my clients have asked, so how, how do you know what you're eating? Well, I'll tell you what people started to do is not really understand what they're eating. They're just hitting the goals, like hitting the macro, mm -hmm. hitting the carb, hitting the fat, hitting the protein. Yep. So now I'm like having them read labels. And so yeah. they have some homework in the beginning, like go through, go through your refrigerator and pantry and give me 10 items that are just primarily carbohydrates, protein, fats, and really start to understand in reading labels and understanding what you're putting in your body and then feeling it. Yeah. Did I eat too much? Well, how did you feel? Did you feel like you ate too much 30 minutes after the meal? Then yes. The answer is always yet, always yes. Even if it seemed okay on paper, you didn't pay attention enough while you were eating. You ate too fast. You just weren't mindful and really teaching them to get into their body because your needs do change. And as clients get leaner, this was another hard one. We would try to add in macros when we were tracking. Everyone has resistance to that. Although as you get leaner, your metabolism improves, it increases, and you need to add in. Um, so the self-report is, is something that I think is very important. And it also helps improve your metabolism. Um, so I, I, I know that because I have um, an RMR that I've done that is the highest I've seen on myself since I've been doing them. And I started yep. doing RMRs when I was 20. So um, that was pretty cool to me. And just allowing myself to eat what I felt like I needed in the moment. Well, you're, you're teaching a, a more succinct, like, it's like anything, you know, we learn over time. Um, you know, I think it's a good segue into like my business where early on, you know, myself and, and my, my partner were, <clears throat> you know, trying to train competitively for CrossFit. And then, uh, you know, we were young and really healthy and getting after it. And, and everyone who came into the gym, we knew how to get people super fit, super fast. Um, and you know, we would throw really challenging training out and it, and it worked. Um, and a lot of people got really fit really fast, but it also was like not sustainable for, for certain populations where you had to have a real good, like governor on yourself, like a self regulator and, and understand like when to pull back or, or, how and when to scale, which, which can be a challenge in a group. And, and, you know, the evolution of, of my programming over the years has been, um, you know, we did, uh, you know, everything was all in one program. And then we, we did eventually like separate it into like our, our level two and then our all levels. And, but you know, the all levels at one point was, was a pretty complex. It was a, a much more complex program than it is now where, um, had tons of like, you know, weightlifting cycles that hit on specific days with percentages and linear cycles, which is really challenging to run with a big group. And, and, uh, you know, if you miss a week or two or, or, you know, you're off again, you're going to have to really understand how to like self-regulate, or if you're just coming into the gym brand new and with CrossFit workouts, it's also really tricky when you're putting like metabolic workouts after it because in a traditional, usually what people are doing with these traditional weightlifting programs, they're based around like doing slow accessories, like after it and not workouts that like tear your body up the way, like a really hard CrossFit workout will. So week to week, like, you know, as the percentages are evolving, um, depending on the workout, like if you did some crazy hero workout on Saturday and then like, it's, you know, a 90% triple on a back squat on Monday and you, you know, you were torn up from that workout. The program would kind of fail in that moment. Um, so like the more I zoomed out and started to look at it, I simplified things. Um, so that you kind of could regulate yourself within the, the, you know, we'll, we'll do progressive lifts, and you're feeling it almost like the, the conjugate method where 
like you're going to build to a heavy triple or you're going to go across with the same weight each time where uh you can kind of meet your body where it's, where at, it's that at that day, day. and so i don't have and, to say yeah. you know if you're not feeling it you don't push that 85 percent where it, then you get injured exactly and the injury in your world is kind of like the kid sprinting and stopping 100 <laughs> percent. in my world it's burnout and that's you know i think that's like probably the message we're really trying to say is it, it send out hey consistent <laughs> consistent progress always beats the 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 stopping the burnout the injury and and if i can ever look at like the times when i'm at my most fit it is 100% due to consistency over time and and you know even during that consistent time you're going to have like some peaks and valleys in there but it's consistency over time is where you build like this really solid fitness. And so the whole thought process with this, it's a, it's a small programming change that'll take place after Murph and our summer cycle. So I always have a, a specific goals in the cycle and, you know, this last one was Murph. So just getting everyone's bodies prepped for Murph, easing people into running, getting some more volume on pull-ups, push-ups and, and squats. And, and we're starting to track towards that. When we finish, we're going to have a, uh, you know, a whole other list of, of different um, things that were objectives we're trying to achieve. Uh, but what I'm going to change a little bit in the programming is um, something equivalent to if you've ever followed like uh, comp train or CrossFit New England, um, they have like three different tracks of the same workout. Uh, CrossFit, actually, they have what's called a cap program, which is um that's their affiliate programming. So if you look at their like CrossFit.com workout of the day, um, and they have three levels. So CrossFit calls it RX, intermediate and beginner. And right now we do like an RX and then an RX plus. Um, and then uh, CrossFit New England has compete, train and sweat. I like CrossFit New England's um, compete, train and sweat trio. I favor that over the CrossFit one, and it's mainly for the psychology of it. Um, and I listened to a podcast on it a, a while back, and, and I really liked it. And I, I mean, this is years ago that I listened to this, but the compete is um, – so that's just for their class. It's not like the level two, but that is going to give like – that's kind of like what we do now is like our RX plus equivalent. Um that's going to give athletes a chance to work some of those trickier skills and then challenge themselves. So, Hey, my goal is to like, I want to get bar muscle ups and, and utilize those in workouts and try and make maybe a quarter final in, in the open next year. Like that's going to be your, your workout track. And that's, you're going to see a lot of people in their, you know, twenties and early thirties really attacking that track. And, and they're really motivated to, um, accelerate their fitness, get super fit. Um, and then in uh, CrossFit New England, their train is uh, that is for people who they want to get really fit. But the whole idea was like to be fit for things like outside of the gym. Um, in CrossFit New England, they actually and this is where we'll have some subtle differences. I haven't actually named the CrossFit Grandview equivalents. I'll roll all that out here in a few weeks. Um, but what they do is they take out like any risky movements like all their pull-ups are strict. Like they don't do any kipping. Um, the weights are very similar, um, but there's, there's some like subtle differences in just like the workout design um, to take away any risk of, of injury. Like, um, you know, probably with like uh, any sort of like rings, they'll, they'll do bar dips, you know, things like that. And then they have a sweat. Um, so sweat is for people looking to get like a really good uh, metabolic workout. The loads are lighter. Um, it's also looking for people who are like, you know, they're not super interested in probably like climbing ropes. So uh, in yesterday's workout, I had a uh, option where you could do like a, a knees or like a toe to bar knees to chest <clears throat> ropes tend to like tear you up. Or you like are afraid of getting up high or an injury like, that sweat option would not have like a rope climb in it, or you're going to have like a, a seated Z press instead of like going upside down against the wall. 
So it's a way for people to decide what they want to do, but then still feel like they're competing yep. with other people. It, it, they still kind of have some push or motivation to like enter your score in where I feel like probably a lot of people now that scale just don't enter their score in because they, they might be like, oh, well, you know, I did that. I sub this movement or I sub yes. that movement. But you still feel like you're more like a part of a group. It gives you a little more specific roadmap. So I and I, I figured this out, I don't know, maybe back in like 2017, I noticed like there's a workout, uh, Nasty Girls, a, a very specific like uh, kind of a CrossFit benchmark. It's um, seven ring muscle ups, 10 hang power cleans at 135, 95, uh, 50 air squats, three rounds for time. Um, really famous CrossFit workout. So I planned that on a Friday and I remember the gym being really slow. Now, of course, everyone, like we have scaling options. Everyone can scale that. I, I love that workout. I think it's a really cool balanced workout. Like it's that. a great test. Super cool. Um, so the next time I planned it, I uh, put, um, I might've done like uh, seven like burpee pull-ups 10 hang power cleans at 115, 75, 50 air squats, three rounds for time. RX plus put the, the actual prescribed workout, big full class. And I'm like, okay, all I did there is I put a roadmap for the majority of our membership. It's, it's there. Um, and that's how I've really programmed since is like, I'm going to plan something. Now, even with the more challenging workouts, I'm going to plan something that, uh, a lot of us can see and like, okay, there's parts of that that I'm, I'm going to be able to do. And then people can kind of modify from there. And then an RX plus would be like a very competitive workout. Well, I'm just going to try and take this a step further and have three different options. Most days, now some days, some of those options will merge. So like CrossFit New England, for example, they'll have the compete and train, like say we're doing like the sled drag uh, carry workouts you know, the compete and the train are going to be the same thing. You don't have to go ahead. Like sometimes I want people to use 53s. I don't want them racking seventies. Like you don't want to front rack and carry seventies for 400 meters. Like that won't be, there will be no different. Uh, the kind of that sweater, like beginner equivalent is going to be something that is typically going to be a little lighter. That's not going to bang your body up. And also where I'm going with that too is, I'm going to have a description, but, you know, we'll probably put an infographic. And I think that's going to really include master's athletes generally. So it's going to give our master's athletes a real good track to like, you know, my, my mom's gym, they have a master's uh, scale for each uh, workout. So they have the workout and then loading and then movements for masters. Uh, half the gym I think is, you know, over 50 at her gym. So they they have a, a really big population of, uh, masters athletes. Um, I don't necessarily know that I'm going to call it that because we don't have that large of a master's population, at least percentage wise. Um, but I would like to include that and, and just to give people who, you know, if you're 60 years old, you're probably, you probably shouldn't be lifting the prescribed weight that the 30 year old is not that you can't some days, but not always. But, and then also to that point, I mean, we have 25 year olds that aren't used to lifting, so they might need to come in here and 100%. do that sweat. And, and no one should feel bad about meeting their body where it's at. But no. what I also like about this is um, I feel like, you know, if people are competing in the open, sometimes it's like, oh shit, man, this is so hard. You're kind of showing them, hey, if you want to compete, this is the bar. And, yep. and, and it's kind of like all year round. That's so it, it might mean that workouts now and the compete level are a little harder than the RX are now. So it's going to be a little bit of a wake up call, I think, for people like, OK, I need to get if I do want to yep. compete, I need to get that those skills up. And then, you know, I might be doing the inner personally would probably be more likely to to come to class a little bit more often because I feel like, OK, man, I'm just going to meet my body where it's at today. 
rather than if I want to change that movement or that movement because I feel beat up. Now I just feel it's kind of dumb to do You class. already have a roadmap. I'll just where, do my own. Yeah. You know, a third of the class is going to be doing it that way. I can still participate. I still I can feel like I'm always honoring what my body needs instead of like, okay, I can do that. But instead of saying I can, should I do that? You know, and, and, and so that's a day-to-day decision yep. on what you where you should push yourself. So – what I thought was really cool, and I remember listening to this podcast again years ago, is um, uh, Ben Bergeron's wife uh, did the sweat version. So, like, you know, what is the easier, the beginner version every day? So that was her, like, she she came to class six days a week, and she did, you know, what would be if the regular class I do 135, 95, I guess, and the compete would do, say, uh, if you're doing power cleans, 135, 95. Well, the sweat is going to typically go like 75, 55, somewhere in that range. Quite a bit difference. Well, his, his wife does that. And, you know, unless you've been around for a while, you wouldn't know his wife was a, a top 10 games competitor for multiple years. And she's doing that six days a week. And that's how she trains because her goal is to, to stay fit, stay active and, and come into the gym and, um, and train very frequently to just feel really good. And she's, you know, she's deep into her forties now. Um, they have kids. I think they have like four kids. Uh, she looks great. She's got a six pack and like they're super fit and healthy and she's not super tied up in her numbers. And that's where she's at. And that's in the season of her life. That's where she's at. She may, who knows when her kids all move out, like she might want to try and make a master's run at the games. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But I just thought it was really she cool. She probably will be much more likely to be in that position if she wants to to go for it because Absolutely. she's not like battling all these in between years and getting torn up and yep. getting injured. She doesn't have to stop. She stays consistent yeah. and honors what her body needs. Yeah, I just thought it was really cool. And what what it does is it just gives you a little more specific roadmap where, you know, the old school ways like set the bar super high, like program for the best person in your gym and then scale for the rest of everybody where this gives each person a little bit more of a, a, a specific roadmap and you're going to see a workout and you're going to be like, Oh, okay. I don't have to do ring muscle ups to show up or I'm not going to do some like weird modification that like it's going to be a pain in the butt for the coach. We're all going to have that all set up and squared away when you come in and all it's going to do is just improve everyone and everyone's client experience when they're in here and have that workout be a little bit more specific for you and your needs. And a lot of people may move in between these. Like your goal might be to go from, again, these are, I'm not going to just hijack their, uh, their three things here, but it might be to move from the sweat to the train and then the train to the compete. And then, you know, if you've been doing this for 10, 12 years and you're super busy, you're like, I'm just going to do the sweat workouts right now um, because I'm getting five hours of sleep and I have a new baby or whatever it is. And I'm just going to hit those. And and I think that's that, going to be a good way to keep me active and, and yeah. participating in class. So. Yeah. And, and again, like the overall message is to show up for yourself. So mm -hmm. the same thing with a diet, like. <laughs> You know, when when people weren't doing well, they just have nothing in my fitness pal. So, you know, everyone's like, how are you going to do this? And I'm like, well, honestly, no one would be honest with me when when yeah. they had a bad day. They're just like, it's bad. I'm like, OK, did you did you like steal a pack of gum when you went, went to the store or did you like hold up the register with a, a machine gun like that? This yeah. bad can be a lot of different things like I need to see you. You need to still show up for yourself and try to be healthy, even if. You're not feeling like eating the healthiest that day. You can at least listen to yourself with portions. Same thing with workouts. If you don't feel like lifting super heavy that day, you show up and, and you meet your body where it's at, but you show up for yourself. And I think that's the, you know, the key is to be consistent and show up for yourself. Instead of saying, I can't do this level, I'm not going to participate. Whether this level is the workout or this level is the diet or whatever. We don't have this every day. No one does. So the burnout and the not showing up and hiding away is what holds people back 
ultimately, um, it's not taking it easy for a day or two. It's not having a couple days where you relax on food choices. It's literally not paying attention to your body, not showing up, not being present, ignoring how you feel, and plowing through it. And, and the same with workouts. Which, yeah, it just ran me into a, a leg injury this last week where coming off our, our stem cell treatment, I was feeling super good. And I think I worked out 15 days in a row and jumped on my my legs five days in a row. And Kate Kate here is like, <laughs> she before we did our interval runs, if you, you know, uh, on Tuesday, like our Murph prep, um, my feet were banged up from like uh, our summer shred thing. And I was like, oh, man. I really want to get these intervals in your shirt. You literally told me, do not do it. I didn't even day. know what you were, what the workout was the next day, but I remember You're I like, asked you. should you. take the day off. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to miss no, this because then even, I'm not going to run until yeah. the next And next I won't week. ever say take the day off. I said, you need to adjust your program. And that was it. You just didn't want to make an adjustment. And that's where people will get stubborn. Yeah. And, and Now same, I have to adjust. Yes. <laughs> and the same when we do this, like, remember that. If you will not make an adjustment to meet your body, your body will force you to yep. make an adjustment. And that now adjustment will adjust be much it. larger than the small adjustment. So you Big could have time. probably done those interval runs, but, like, two days later. You know, yeah. like, you could have done, yeah. like, a couple yeah, now it had to be on yeah. your own, and that kind of sucks. But if you really yeah. – people get too tied into a schedule or this is perfect, this is that not. That day would have been a good day to row if I wanted to be in class. Yeah. If I would have just rowed and then do the – which a couple other people were, um, that would have been the great substitution. So, like, you know, this will help me Yeah, taking my own yeah. classes that I'm writing here. <laughs> this will actually help give me a, a roadmap to be like, hey – I'm doing the sweat version today uh, or, or whatever we're going to end up calling it. I'm definitely going to try and make it proprietary, the CrossFit Grandview and our clients too. Um, that's one thing I always look at. Like I love looking like I study a lot of different programs like CrossFit just offered this new uh, cat program to all the affiliates for free. And it's, it's actually fantastic, but I love studying them and then, uh, taking some cool aspects of it and then really, um, you know, customizing it to, to our gym and our people. I think, I think what's cool about it being unique to here is we have our own unique weather. We definitely have unique equipment where like CrossFit or cap, you'll never see them program, uh, like sled drags and carries and all those types of things, which we do in here fairly frequently because they don't think, you know, most gyms don't have 30 tray sleds to go drag, you know, or, uh, you know, 50 slam balls to do ball slams. Mm -hmm. Like some of these movements aren't going to pop up. So. And our population. I mean, our, I think everyone thinks of us as like such a younger gym, but what's the majority of our population? You told me before, I forget that age range. The, well, the biggest demographic is uh, 25 to 35, but the second biggest one, which people didn't know is uh 30, it's like 35 to 44. Yeah. So that is, that's, and it's close behind that, that um, not too far behind the uh, 25 to 35 uh, or 26 to 35. We have a very yeah. big range where like your, your mom's gym, for example, is more just like the older crowd where we have it's like gonna be such like a mid, large mid thirties to sixties. It's just the, the area they're in, you yeah. know, um, People go, they move back out there to raise families and things like that, where people post-grad are all around here. And we have a, a, a lot of young population here, um, you know, college, fresh out, you know, post-grad. Uh, but we also have Upper Arlington and Grandview, you know, right there, which is uh, all your moms and dads yeah. and, and, and younger families and then people who even their kids have moved out and stuff. So. We have, a, we have a pretty big range here, and, and a lot of people, if they just, like, follow us and see, uh, you know, highlights, it's going to be a lot of our younger guys and gals who are competing and, and doing some really cool stuff there. But, you know. But everybody can participate, and everybody can play in this yep. way. And I think yep. that's what's really neat. Like, hey, if I'm feeling beat up, you know, just take a period of time where you do – whatever you decide the sweat version will be and, and, and just do that. But I still, I'm going to have a few people I can kind of like race against or yeah. 
be, you know, it, it still has some edge to it and some motivation rather than just working out by yourself. Or, or it's not a boot camp. So like, you know, a boot camp style class is we are going to do these movements for this amount of time, grab, and there's a pile of dumbbells, go grab a, go grab a, a pair of dumbbells that, that is good for you. And, and then, then you your just, form goes to crap. All standards go to crap. Well, you're just, well, you're just moving around. <laughs> yeah. So you're just, you're moving around where this gives you a focused training stimulus and, and, and workout to, to hit, um, and the motivation and everything of that group without just trying to like, I'm just trying to look like I'm busy during yeah. this time period. So I, I think, you know, again, it's a small evolution, but I think it's going to really help the, uh, overall user experience and, and just client experience. And what I think it's going to do too, is give us on both, you know, both the upper, both ends of the scale, it's going to give us uh, more options for like higher end movements, like, you know, our muscle ups and, and things like that in class or some, some heavier weights. And then also um, some lower impact options yeah. where we're doing, you know, things that aren't going to bang our knees up and like, oh man, I can't, you know, like the, uh, what just happened to me, like, oh, we did box jumps, then we ran and then we did double under, you know, it's like, I'm going to look at things like that and be like, okay, this master's population should probably do prisoner step ups rather than box jump overs at 30 inches uh, this day. And it's going to be spelled out for you mm -hmm. to do. You're going to see five mm -hmm. other people in class doing that modification just like that, rather than like four people maybe skipping out on the barbell side because it looks like it might hurt their knees or something. Yeah. So that's, that's the whole thought process. More details will come out. We'll come out with like some infographics and stuff here. Um, again, that'll be in June um, when we'll move to that. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and I'm really excited about this. I yeah. think it's going to be a really cool new change where it just gets more people participating more often. And mm -hmm. um, you're going to feel like you can come in, you know, six days a week where a lot of times I tell my clients that are like in their late thirties and forties, don't do CrossFit more than three or four times a week. You're going to get broken down. Sure. So now I think it's going to be more like, okay, I want you to choose if you can choose compete twice in this week. And then I want you to scale down on the other days and I want you to get in five days, you yeah. know? Yeah. So it's, I think it's just going to allow for more frequency in um, a more spelled out way. And then just a group that's going to do it with you. So it's more motivating whether you want to compete against that person or you have someone else kind of doing the same thing and like, Hey, those step ups probably sucked more than the box jumps because, you know, you had to go slow and it was such a burn where, you know, this is not one is always better than the other. It's just different. It's going to grow. And I, what I really see too, and, and this is like a, it's a small niche crowd, but it is definitely one. It's people who transfer in from a lot of these smaller gyms, um, have like a pretty competitive ish program, but it's not like our level two. It's not going to get you, you know, it's not aimed at getting you towards the games, but everything's like pretty like, you know, Hey, you see barn ring muscle ups all the time or like these, these tougher lifts and they come in here and maybe they're like, I don't want to do level two, but like, I'm not quite getting as much of that. It's going to give us a few more options for that. You'll see a little bit more of that pop up. And where if that season is just coming up for you where you want to like, I really want to like do more muscle ups and try and walk on my hands and work out or, or, or whatever it might be, you're going to see a few more options than you do currently uh, popping up like that. And uh, I think you'll, you know, you'll really enjoy that if you're like, I don't want to be a, uh, you know, full time level two athlete, but this will give me something a little bit in between that. So yeah, I think, uh, you know, we're always trying to tweak and change things and improve it. And um, and then when we do this, like, I'm going to really try and stick with it and, and tweak it. And it's not going to be, it's not going to look exactly what it'll look like in five years, the first three months. But I think it's going to be something that sticks and, and something that you guys all come to really enjoy and love. Um, but change can be yeah. hard. So, yep. you know, there's a lot of a lot of my old clients coming back don't like this change. So you sure. guys, you know, if you're used to this way, you might you might have a little resistance to it. But I would uh, challenge you to evolve as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll catch you next time.